So you believe we're in the middle of a food revolution. What does that mean? What do the consumer want? Oh, it means that uh, people are questioning uh, the mainstream food system in many ways. They are re-questioning their relationship to brands, their relationship to uh, the stores in which they shop. And, uh, and by doing this, they go for alternative ways. Uh, they want to know what's behind the brand, the ingredients, uh, the way the food has been produced, the agriculture that produced it, uh, the people behind the brand. And basically they are turning away from their older brands that their parents, the previous generation, thought uh, they were there for granted and they are reconsidering completely their options. And this is what we call the food revolution. And who is driving this? Or what well, is? I, I think essentially uh, the millennials generation, the Gen Y, the Gen Z, because they have grown uh, in, a, in a world where they saw the limits of the system happening. They saw climate change, they saw obesity, they saw uh, non-communicable diseases, they saw malnutrition, they saw the difficulty of water access in many places around the world, which you didn't before mass media was there, and which we as a generation hadn't uh, seen happening either. So they saw the limits in the system. And then what uh, drives the revolution is the fact that this is a digitally native uh, generation. So they are taking pictures of their food, they're discussing all around the place, and through the social network, social media, uh, they are creating social norms. Because then they influence their friends, their tribes of friends, their audiences, uh, their uh, sports teams, uh, their parents, their families. So as they grow, we also see, for instance, parents becoming agents of change. Uh, when you are a millennial and you have a, a child, you reconsider the way you uh, feed your family. You turn organic, for instance. Our Happy Family brand here in, uh, in the US is the leading organic baby food uh, brand in the US. And it's absolutely striking to see that uh, the uh, organic portion of the market was like 3% 10 years ago, and it's now 40%. So the, main, the mainstream becomes organic for parents. And then because it's for parents, it's also for the rest of the family. So that's how gradually, one by one, but in a very uh, unanimous uh, approach around the world, uh, these millennials are changing uh, the way everyone eats and drinks. Is there any products or changes to specific products that you've made because of this revolution? Yes, yeah, so, uh, we, we have made at Danone uh, a conscious choice uh, probably 10, 15 years ago to focus on product categories that uh, we believe are on trend with all these changes. So uh, essentially fresh, starting with fresh dairy, fermented, uh, probiotics, uh, the vegetal platforms, uh, the, uh, so silk and so delicious and a number of others here in this country, Vega is another one. Uh, other brands that we have outside of the US after the acquisition of White Wave uh, a year and a half ago uh, for Danone here. We have our baby food business uh, globally, our medical nutrition business, our bottled water uh, premium business with Avion and uh, other brands as you mentioned. So these are uh, categories that we've seen a long time ago as being the ones that would be uh, driving uh, the, the growth and this is what is happening. We are playing in eight of the 10 fastest uh, growing food categories around the world, and we are shaping the recipes uh, f uh, to make sure that it matches this demand. So for instance, uh, we are taking away all the artificial uh, uh, ingredients uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the product, uh, the artificial sweeteners, we're taking away even some colorants going uh, directly to uh, uh, natural, completely natural colorants, um, in order to make sure that we simplify the labels, uh, we we reduce the neighbors, we're going for more naturality. This is one of the reasons why in the US, Danone has decided to move half of our global uh, fresh dairy business uh, f from GMO to non-GMO, entirely non-GMO now for $1 billion uh, in, in our brands, in particular Danimals, which is our fastest growing uh, uh, dairy uh, uh, kids brand here. And so, um, yes, there are many, many uh, things in which we are uh, embracing that revolution because we believe as a company it's a big bet that we should embrace the revolution not resist it and Dano North America just became the or recently became one of the the largest B corporation in the world oh, yeah. how hard was that to do what did you have to change well um, yes I mean this B Corp agenda for us is uh, is one of utmost importance because it tells um, 
many people, I'll, I'll put it this way, many people are walking away from the mainstream food system today because they don't trust that system to serve their interests. And basically, uh, there's a fear that big business is here to serve the interests of big business and of shareholders. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt that shareholder value is part of the equation. And, but it cannot be the ultimate purpose of a brand that serves the purpose of a food revolution. It's part of the positive consequences of serving the revolution well and for the long term. Having said that, uh, we need to rebuild trust all over the place. People are walking away from the large brands. And one way of doing this is B Corp, because B Corp is an NGO that provides uh, a certification for companies that have the utmost uh, environmental, social, and governance standards in their operations. And we are blessed with having been recognized in a number of our subsidiaries already and brands as B Corp companies. Um, it's important because it tells what is the intention of the people behind the brand, and this intention to is uh, use, usually important in the conversations between the brands, consumers, civil society, and government. So we started with smaller companies, smaller brands. Happy Family is, uh, is uh, already and for long a B Corp here in the US. But then we went for this full certification of a $6 billion business here, all our brands. Uh, we, th we thought it would take uh, three years. It finally took one year. Uh, so it was very hard on one side, but I think what made a difference was that we have embedded already for 15 years at Danone uh, the measurement of our social and environmental impact. So we had the metrics, the KPIs, the systems that B Corp could then build on their certification. And the second is the energy of people, because uh, I'm, I was just speaking about the relationship with consumers, but the relationship with our own employees has changed. The conversation has changed, and the level of energy and, and employer branding overall and engagement that it creates is amazing. And I think this is one of the main reasons why we were able to achieve this certification in one year instead of three. And what was the biggest change that you had to make in that year to get it? Um, th there are still a number of commitments that we need to make in terms of reporting. Uh, Danone is pretty good at acting, not so much at uh, re reporting in many ways. So reporting on the social topics, for instance, was a very important one. Uh, another one was about uh, documenting the legal aspects of uh, some of what we're doing, because uh, a number of the B Corp uh, companies today, most of them are pretty small companies, startups, social entrepreneurs. It's a extremely creative that rebuilds capitalism in many ways uh, and but uh, we as large companies that have been there for 100 years even if we disrupt ourselves we have a whole lot of things to deal with as large companies so if you have a class action uh, is it a problem or is it not a problem uh, in the US having a class action is is something that unfortunately or fortunately happens as soon as you're a reasonably sizable company. As a small brand, you don't. As a big one, you do. So B Corp and ourselves had to adjust on whether this is fair, not fair, under which circumstances, documenting those in order for them to feel comfortable about the accreditation process. Is there, was there any pushback from a business perspective about why would we do this? Um, yes, in a way, the pushback is we have so many things to address, uh, uh, meaning that we have the short, the mid, the long-term prospects to build as a company, uh, huge engagement from the 100,000 people of Danone uh, around the world. Uh, that's going to be another uh, important, but yet another project. And so the pushback was more on, on that side. We had a very interesting conversation with our investors, and actually, uh, even more recently, uh, we've started to uh, see the direct positive impact of B Corp certification on uh, the financial metrics of Danone. Uh, one thing I'd like to uh, add to this is that, uh, for instance, we renegotiated a syndicated banking loan of 2 billion euros uh, with 12 of the largest banks in the world that is going to have a lower cost for Danone as we are rolling out the B Corp uh, certification process. So this basically recognizing the fact that the credit rating of Danone is better as a B Corp than not being a B Corp. And so uh, as soon as you hit that, then you suddenly understand that it can have a, a major impact on the risk and return uh, aspects of a business model. Wonderful. And you have so many products in your umbrella. What is your personal favorite? Which one do you consume the most? 
Oh, my favorite is about uh, high protein yogurt. So here in the US, this is the triple zero oikos of Danone. And in my country of origin, where I live when I don't travel, which is not uh, not very often, is, uh, is a, a product called Danio, which is the equivalent. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.